All right. A quick look around my uh, my hub, which is the main base where you start in Satisfactory. Even though the game is an alpha, it's still running pretty smooth for the most part. Uh, there are the occasional jitters, and that happens mainly when you're in the a dense factory environment like this because all these animations going on, I guess, and there's all these calculations running in the background, calculating all these assembly machines and the conveyors and everything. So basically, you start out with nothing and you gotta get basic power and start mining the first thing you can find, which is usually iron. And uh, this is my original iron mines right here. This is an ore extractor. And that just pulls the uh, ore out of the ground, which is iron. Different ore nodes have different impurities. This one's impure, so it doesn't produce much. There's purer ones around, and those are, whoops, those are golden. Uh, this is a smelter, which is turning the iron ore into ingots. You've really got to watch in this game to balance your input and output so that they're the same unless you want to store some extra material somewhere. And then, like the ingots get sent here, which is a st these are storage canisters. So I've got lots of ingots. It's good to have a buffer like this, so that if something happens and the supply gets cut off for a while, then the machinery can still do their thing until you get it working again. And it's not that things break or anything, but sometimes you got to reroute a belt or make an upgrade or make a change, and you have to cut off the supplies. Oh, the sun's coming up. So. As we progress down this line, this is making iron rods, which are really important. Everything is made from iron rods almost. Extra iron rods are stored here. And they go into this machine to make screws. Screws go into everything. You need to have lots and lots of screws. And then the screws come out, get stored here again. Always want to have a buffer. And sometimes you just need to grab, like, a few stacks of screws to go build something on the workbench. So you always want to have something available. And then, actually, this gets a little convoluted. This isn't the next machine. It's, uh... Oh, that's right. This one is just storing screws right now. I'm not doing anything with the screws. But, like, there's another, another screw assembly line here. And this one, if you follow the conveyors... Ah, okay. Conveyors go up the top. Uh, yep. That's going... Yeah, okay. Yeah, I forgot the bottom of the belt's coming in, so that means the top of the belt's going out. So yeah, there's the screws. Going in here to make rotors, which are pretty important, too. You need, need to have lots of rotors to build a lot of different devices and buildings and machines. And here's my stockpile of rotors. That one's empty, but that one's full. So, room for more. And then some of the rotors are being saved. Some of the rotors are coming out here. Whoops. And going to this machine. As we get farther down the line, we're building more and more complex things. The rotors are being joined to statters in this machine in order to build motors. Uh, motors are very expensive and slow to build, so this is all I have right now. And you do need a lot of those when you start getting into the bigger, more complex buildings like refineries and fuel power plants. So. And since I've built on this giant canyon. 
Ooh, scary. Um, I just, as I need more space, I'm just building the foundation out farther and farther. Since there's really no physics involved in an overhang, you can make this go out as far as you want to and with nothing holding it up, and that's fine as long as it's attached to something. So. Although at one point I started needing to mix devices, parts from things that were built earlier in the assembly line, and I didn't want to snake conveyors all the way back to the beginning. Uh, to the, well, from, from the beginning to the end or something, so I also started a second story. So I'm building some things here that need access to early products like wire and rods, but are building something else. And just basically, I mean, you don't have to follow this rule, but in this game you you try to start from the basic building blocks on one end and try to work your assembly lines in a straight line a logical order to whatever end product they're building and feeding into other products like here's reinforced metal plates which are used a lot in this game and that's being fed down there to build uh, crystal oscillators to build computers It's a very slow process, only makes two a minute. That feeds into this machine here, there goes an oscillator. And some circuit boards that are being built on another assembly line. And this is building computers very slowly, barely three a minute. And in the middle of the game where I am at now, you do need a lot of computers to run things, so an important building block. I'm building up a stockpile of those. Well, this is the space cable, whatever it is, uh, cable going up into orbit, space elevator. Um, it's really only used to give you milestones. Uh, you have to feed certain components into this thing to build more and more complex components that apparently home wants you to build to send back, and in reward for that you unlock higher and higher technology tiers. So I'm working on tier 7 and 8 right now, which will get me into the nuclear age eventually, but I'm nowhere near being able to build some of this stuff. Some of this stuff is pretty complicated and involves four components. And look at the quantities, like 2,500 of these things I need, the versatile framework. So to do that, I need uh, quick math. Um, something like over 25,000 steel beams, and I don't have that many lying around. That's a slow product to make, and it involves mixing coal and iron. Uh, I eventually need to convert all my iron, my coal mines over to steel production. Right now a lot of them are still feeding coal power plants. These are coal power plants here. Here's the coal. But eventually I really need to start redirecting the this coal towards steel production because I need more and more steel now. And I now have petroleum technology, so I'm in another location. I'm drilling for oil and pumping it and using it to make petroleum-based fuel, and that is used to run petroleum fuel power plants, which are much more powerful and more efficient than these coal plants. They produce twice the power. So I'm getting ready, basically, to dismantle these, oops, these coal plants and uh, redirect this coal supply coming from the nearby mine to something more useful, like steel production. But I can't just knock all these coal plants offline because they're 75 megawatts apiece, so that would be a substantial drop in power. It might be enough to put me at the critical point. See, I'll go ahead and turn off this one power plant. You should see a dip on that uh, gray capacity line. 
Yep, see how the graph dips? So if I shut all six of these off, I'd probably be below my demand, which wouldn't be disastrous at this point. I have storage systems now, uh, basically giant batteries, which are... Turn this back on before I forget. Which are these things up here. Oops. Ah. Really? I'm stuck. Uh, okay. Get the pipe out of the way and replace it. That does happen once in a while. It's still a bug in this game. You can get stuck in some place and you either have to die or remove what's above you if you can. It doesn't happen too often, though. It mostly happens with the trees. You can get stuck on a tree real easy. So these are all batteries. They're fully charged now because they've been connected a long time. They can provide 100 megawatts apiece for an hour. So even if all my power plants went offline due to some stupidity, uh, these things would run things for a while. I tend, to, as a habit, to try to build one of these battery backups for each power plant so I have reserve capacity. So Now, I'll show you the most fun way to get around this game is this wonderful device you get early on before you get vehicles that lets you ride the wires. I still prefer this to driving the buggy around. So this is the closest accessible water, and you need water to run the coal mines. So these are water extractors. And they're pulling water out of the lake and supplying it to my coal plants. And you need to keep the pipes full and the water pressure up. Uh, if you go uphill too far, you have to add pumps. And you can see that this pipe just basically snakes through here and connects to each one of these power plants. So the plant takes in coal and water. Without them, it don't run. And just for giggles, I'm going to run real quick over to the petroleum area where I've got where I found the uh, oil wells. And that's where I set up the new petroleum fueled power plants and my mining, not my mining, my uh, refineries, which are important in the later parts of the game. Uh, you need the oil refineries to make plastics. Plastics are important. Rubber and some other things. Polyester resin, which I don't have much of a use for now because I don't have the tech to use it. But I will need it, so I'm stockpiling it. So you can see the those are pl plastics on the bottom belt coming from the refinery back to the main factory. And there's nothing in this game that says you have to have your factory all in one place. It actually makes it a little laggy over at the factory, but uh, that's the way I started and easier to keep track of it. I know people on YouTube post videos all the time where they've got their factories all scattered around and each like factory is doing one or two specific types of products. I've got everything in one place right now except for my quartz production, which is near the quartz mine, and uh, oil production, which is over here. Whee! And it was a long slog to find this area initially. And it was very unsafe over here initially. But now I've got all the riffraff kicked out. There's uh, animals. They're not terrible in this game. They're if you're not careful, they'll kill you, and then you drop all your stuff, and then you have to come back and get your stuff. And it can be... It's kind of like Astroneer. You never really lose anything unless you're in a very precarious place, as long as you can get back to it. And as you can see, it's a very pretty game. I'm running uh, 
not ultra settings. Um, I'm running on high, just uh, not not that I was lagging on the framework at ultra. I was still getting a good 120 frames per second, but uh, I decided to drop things down just a little bit to high, because uh, frankly it doesn't make much of a difference visually. It still looks the same to me, and I keep the view distance on high, so you can see a long ways, and uh, it just seems like maybe it's running a little smoother that way. So this is the new petroleum-based power plant here that I just got online. I got four of these puppies. These are 150 megawatts each as opposed to 75 megawatts for the coal plants. So I've got room here to add a couple more. Actually, I can just keep extending this platform toward the coast and keep adding power plants and right now I've got so much excess fuel I'm producing that I should be able to add another at least two I can do the calculations maybe four power plants running off this one well on these refineries these are the well is here this is the extractor oil extractor that's producing crude and the crude gets pumped back here to these two refineries because you can't do anything with crude. Just like in real life, you have to refine it into something usable, which it's turning it into fuel. And it's a byproduct polymer resin, which I'm just storing right now because I haven't got any use for it yet. That's coming. And I don't know how much I'm going to need, so I'm just stockpiling it at this point. And I've got this pipe basically already in position and this pipe here so that I can add a third refinery because everything in the middle to late game is all refineries. These these refineries are used to make all kinds of things. Like here's the here's the recipe list for what you can make with this refinery. Right now it's set for fuel and polyester resin and as I discover new technologies there'll be more options in here. Uh, right now I'm just storing some of this resin well, no, actually I'm not. Uh, I'm going to have to turn this off for a while. This is uh, this is called the, the awesome sink. You can just put stuff that you don't need in it, and it gets destroyed, and you get coupons to buy extra little things that are mostly quality of life, like uh, factory lighting and architectural things like walls. I haven't really gotten too much into that except buying ladders and lights. Yeah, I'm going to let this resin stockpile for a while. Didn't come back and check earlier to see if it was being stored, so it's, it was basically being dumped into the sink as fast as it was coming in. And again, there's a... got a battery or a storage system for each power plant, so if it gets knocked offline, the battery can take over and replace it. Early in the game, you have these primitive generators that run off of uh, grass and wood chips, but you have to constantly feed them manually yourself when they run down. Uh, when you get the coal, then it's all automated, and fuel oil is all automated. So this is another oil well. This one, however, is in making plastic and rubber, but as a byproduct, I've got it making heavy oil residue. And the heavy oil residue is being used to make petroleum coke in this refinery here. So that's basically a refinery there making plastic and heavy fuel, and then this is refining the heavy fuel or heavy oil into petroleum coke, and that petroleum coke is like coal, except it's not as energy dense, and it's feeding this one of my old coal power plants, but I'm getting ready to phase all these coal plants out. It's just I gotta do it bit by bit so I don't wind up getting short on power. And again, some water pumps for the coal plants, because you need them, and you need 
water for some of the refinery processes later in the game, so I've got lots of room to add more water extractors. And this is a third well here. This was actually the first well I set up here. Which is also making plastic. Lots and lots of plastic. And the heavy oil residue, which comes hand in hand, and powering these two coal plants. So it's not a micromanage game per se. You don't really have to come back and check all this stuff, except that you want to make sure your assembly lines don't get clogged. Uh, nothing is going to break in a, 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 a conveyor belt, for instance. Uh, no, no animal's going to damage it or anything. That's not that kind of game. But uh, sometimes, like I just found out that uh, the polyester resin wasn't being stored because it was being dumped into the sink too quick. So, uh, good thing I checked that. I turned that off, and now it'll s start saving all that polyester resin for whenever I need it. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, well, oh, that's about it there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, at this mid stage of the game, I've also got these uh, these things on my feet. Blade Runners, which make me bounce. Without them, I don't bounce as much. So there's a certain wonderful freedom you get when you got those things, because you can just bouncy bouncy everywhere. You can also fall from a great height, and it doesn't hurt you as bad. So like when I'm just power pulling around, I can just jump and not worry about getting hurt when I hit the ground. Well, well about it. I got another one other major location which is the quartz mine, but there's nothing much to see there. There's just some more coal being manufactured there, which I've already switched over to steel production and quartz crystals and uh, that's about it over there. This is what the map looks like. It's revealed as you play the game. See, I'm right here. There's my beacons I left for the oil nodes I discovered, and the hub, my main base is here, that's the uh, space elevator, and there's my hub. So this is all I've explored so far. This is reputedly a huge world. And there are some resources left to discover. I did find sulfur out in the boonies somewhere. I forget. So there's uranium. I found uranium, but I can't do anything with it yet because I don't have any nuclear technology, but eventually I can go nuclear power plants. Yeah, I guess that's it. Hope you enjoyed it.